Let's see. This will. There we go. Finished eating. It's not nice listening to someone talk while they're eating. Okay. I had a pretty interesting lucid. Just quickly fixing my camera. There we go. Now there's no lag. Wee. Okay. So first of all, this is going to be a very odd video, I suppose. I don't know. Honestly, what is odd? It just defies the norm. So I, uh, a while ago, actually uploaded at the time, June 24, I uploaded this video. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> the timestamp lol. Where I was talking about a lucid experience that I had. I'm still practicing how to properly become lucid more reliably. And I think one of the keys is making it more prominent within my life. I'm pursuing consciousness a lot, a lot of consciousness experiments, a lot of understanding consciousness, the science of consciousness. So I think it's probably important to actually release this video in some format. I wasn't going to release it because I actually missed out on a few key components within it. So I thought, why don't I just watch my own video that I never published and just fill in the gaps? Here we go. Probably helps if it's coming through the fucking speakers. Cause I, I don't remember it that clearly, but if I watch myself, or even just listen to myself, I, I really don't like watching myself, but whatever. If I, if I just listen to myself, recall the dream, um, it's going to come back a lot more strongly. So similar to the way, similar to the way I did a video where I talked about my AI dream recall assistance technique thing, I'm essentially watching myself recall the dream and then I'm getting triggered because I'm not accurately doing it. This is a human intervention of myself. <laughs> okay. I was half asleep when I did this, by the way. Oh my God. I asked you please to go through the right speakers. So apologies if my words are like fucking all over the place. Sort of just woke up. Like I, I had my, oh my God, it's fucking, do you see that saliva? Ugh. Um, yeah, I'm like still like 80% awake, 20% asleep, I think. Can confirm. I was quite wrong. I went to grab my recorder to bring it into the garage because I usually have it in the garage and I ended up bringing a fucking white packet instead. So that, that is- When I said recorder, I mean this little flute instrument. There's uh, a, a- And I live in, at the time I was living in the house, but there's a garage on the property that I'm now living in because of difficult to explain, but a lot of, a lot of construction problems, but anyway. Commentary on how much sleep is still active. <laughs> um, anyway, I I had a had I had a lucid dream inside a loose uh, sorry inside a dream. I'll explain that a bit better. I went to sleep. A uh, duh. I don't know if I go into the actual specific. I'm pretty sure I don't go into the specific specifics. You know what? Let me just. So, I. I've, I've had something similar to this before. I've had false awakenings. So like I've slept during a dream that I've woken up inside the dream, like, oh wow, I was dreaming. And then boom, I woke up again. So I've had that sort of stuff, but I, I, I've never had a, I probably have to be honest, cause you dream every single night. You just don't recall, but it's just, as you start recalling more and more dreams, they just keep coming easier and easier and easier. Um, at the moment, Recalling them is like real fucking easy as long as I keep it up and do it in the mornings usually. Yeah, so I had a lucid moment while I was sleeping inside the dream. Okay, so I'm going to set this up a little bit more better. Fell asleep, a do. I close my eyes to better recall. I entered the dream without realizing I was dreaming. And I say the dream is completely irrelevant, which they usually are. It depends on who you ask, really. But my perception and understanding of dreams is there is a creative intelligence within all of us a creativity and when you transition from the awake state over the threshold to sleep um if you cannot become self-aware you dream and essentially what that is is just intrusive thoughts images and creations that are happening regardless of what you want but it's it's creativity that's how i perceive dreams okay the wonders of evolution and learning new things at a continuous and extremely fast rate. 
since I was recording my reaction of this, you'll see more of this Yuland pop up as well throughout the video. I've come to a better definition of what dreams are. They're intrusive simulations. So sort of similar to the idea of intrusive thoughts you get in your conscious waking life, they're like uber intrusive thoughts of the unconscious state. So extending on that, if you've ever had a dream that is extremely stressful or it's caused a massive amount of uncomfortability, it's not your fault. They're just intrusive simulations, okay? It's also an interesting mechanic with dreams as well. They'll actually create simulations. Uh, this was discovered by some people who are studying lucid dreaming that they have discovered this tendency for the unconscious mind to create simulations that draw on the threats you experience in your waking life to reinforce the neural pathways so you will better avoid threats like that the next day or whatever. It's a pretty shit system, just like negativity bias. There's a lot of shit systems built into us humans, but you've got to work with what we've got and work and ascend beyond it. Anyway, so I transitioned into a dream and the dream was like, I don't know, I think I was in like a, a hotel of some sort and I was hanging out with a friend I used to know. And I think we were sharing the hotel room and then I, I laid down in my bed and then I'm going to continue here. So the actual dream, laid down in my dream bed. So I was inside a bed, inside a hotel room within the dream. And I was not aware whatsoever that I was dreaming. Itself, uh, the content is irrelevant. Yeah, as I was sleeping um, in this bed, as I was sleeping in, in the bed, I sort of came out of sleep, but not completely. So sort of like the awakey, sleepy, Pretty sure I'm referring to the hypnagogic state, but to be honest, I was in probably a fucking hypnagogic state when I'm trying to record this. I forget what the exact terminology you use for that is. Um, awake, sleep, like, it, it, I've had lucid moments in this was. There we go, finished eating. It's not nice listening to someone talk while they're eating. So I was experiencing a hypnagogic state inside a dream, but I didn't know I was dreaming. Like this realm <laughs> um, where the same things happen. So like I'm not asleep, but I'm not awake either. And that's usually when the best lucid moments happen or sleep paralysis as well. Um, but that happened inside the dream. And I, I remember looking when it, once I became lucid, I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I was like, all right, let's, let's experiment a little bit. And I was still like floating above the bed. I don't know if I was floating. It's got to be floating. And I ended up looking at my wrist. Um, it's funny as well as I have a burn mark there and I've done artwork. I'm going to call this the 3D. Okay. This sound like one of those manifestation, um, I'll show you the artwork. Ah, here it is. That's uh, this was from 2023 when I was um, trying some experiments with uh, subliminal messaging uh, of the self some audio experiments as well, some binaural beats. I was also doing the gateway process at the time, which I do not suggest you do at all until, unless you understand consciousness and the science of consciousness, otherwise you'll enter a psychosis. Also, I plan to do some more artwork to experiment to see if the more artwork I do of lucid dreaming, if the idea is the more you work with lucid dreaming in the waking life, the more that'll transition via your subconscious directly into the lucid state. And that's that, that works. The concept works because I recently did that with something else. The woo woo gurus. Anyway, in the 3D, the actual artwork itself it does not really work. Um, ideally, I think if you do the artwork, you probably want to like plaster it above your above where you're sleeping and where. I think the artwork is irrelevant and the placement of the artwork is irrelevant. It's the intention and the action that you do and the effort that you put in during the waking life to embed the idea of becoming lucid of dream awareness into your subconscious so it transfers to the 
astral, as I call it. I have drawn artwork on this to try and induce lucid dreaming. So, like, every time I would see this in some way, it would um, act as a reality checker. Or at least it would remind me to check, see if I'm dreaming. Yeah, I looked at my, my wrist and there was a there was a watch on it, but it wasn't necessarily the watch that was interesting. It was the the watch so you, how you know how it's You know how a watch is circle <laughs> No Yuland, please go on. <laughs> no. Um So the watch was void of all of its TikToky thingies and all of its intricacies. It was just a a void. It was void of everything, and it had in its place in in its place in the circle was like a a screen gateway portal viewing projection thingy. I don't. Okay, so this. I know I'm just repeating myself here. Not me repeating myself. Past past me. Hang on past me so yeah i was in a hypnagogic state and i sort of floated up out of my body remember this is in the dream and within this hypnagogic state i gained awareness that i was dreaming and trying to remember if i had it's like an inception dude if i it's like did i i don't recall having awareness of the amount of inceptions that were happening within the dream when I became aware I just knew I was dreaming I wasn't aware that I was in a dream in a dream which is a fascinating thought experiment if you want to dive into it about reality <laughs> uh yeah okay so yeah hypnagogic state sort of astrally lifted out of um, the body inside the dream became aware that I was dreaming and that's when I I guess the artwork did work um, I, f I forgot about that. It was, I'm pretty sure it was literally where that is, that the watch thing showed up. And the amount of lucidity, I guess, is not 100% uh, from what I recall, because since then I have had about one or two lucid dreams. I'm still, as I said, I'm still trying to work towards having them more frequently, but I need to work with them in the waking life more. Not them themselves, more so the idea of be becoming lucid in dreams. Um, yeah. It also helps understanding more of the science of consciousness as well. Uh, someone you might want to watch for understanding the science of consciousness is Dr. Stephen Greer. Not necessarily his documentaries and stuff that is mostly seen everywhere. It's more so diving into his YouTube channel, finding the lectures he does on the science of consciousness. That's where you get all the good stuff. And I know he's a controversial figure in our uh, Western society, regardless of what you think. His understanding of the science of consciousness is on point. Consciousness science is very subjective, very unique to the individual. Um, however, in quantum physics, it's almost, I think I read a quote somewhere, it's almost impossible to explain quantum physics without bringing in the concept of consciousness because everything in quantum physics is about perception. Not everything, but a lot of it. Anyway. Main gist, I've gained a lot of insight and knowledge from watching Stephen Greer. Um, there are quite a few things that I disagree with that he does, and so do many other people. But as a person with intentions, I, I think they're mostly pure. But just like every human, all of us are fallible to some degree. We know how to explain it. It was like looking into a different dimension, essentially. But that dimension was being projected from my mind. And I was lucid while all this was happening as well. Yeah, at, at the time, I didn't... I, I wasn't able to comprehend that there were levels of lucidity. I've created a scale on a stream on my on my Yolandos channel when I was doing a stream. Essentially, I, I like to put it at like a 0% a on one end and 100% at the other. 0% being you're not self-aware whatsoever, you're just dreaming. And 100% being you're fully lucid and you can astral travel through the universe in the... You, you can actually travel through, uh, for lack of better words, the astral realm, four-dimensional space, whatever you want to call it. Inside a dream, inside a dream. So I was like, okay, I'm, I'm lucid. Um, interesting. And I sort of saw scenery through the, 
the viewing portal, as I'll, as, as I'll put it. And then... I decided, okay, um, let's actually check if this is working properly. Um, and I told myself, all right, let's fly. And then sort of, I don't really have any other word, any other way to put this, but I'm going to try and explain it in the best way I can. That makes sense to me. My consciousness moved through the viewing portal and then I was flying inside the scenery that I was looking at through the viewing portal, but I was still lucid. So I was able to experience. That's fascinating. At the time of recording this, it's amazing. Just about a month has passed, but I've learned so fucking much about consciousness. I'm going to re-listen to that again, because I actually have an idea of what happened there. That I was looking at through the viewing portal, but I was still lucid. So I was able to experience the lucidity and the experience and then after I was done with that and I was happy, I didn't go exploring through space. I was more so just like trying to prove the concept and I didn't want to push the boundaries because I feel like sometimes when you push the boundaries, when you're not that. Okay, so the best way I can explain this is through visualization and drawing at the same time. Number one, the thing with consciousness is to understand. And if you are a skeptical person for the time being, just drop the skepticism, accept what I'm saying is truth and after I'm done, bring it back. Uh, you can do whatever the fuck you want. One of the most amazing things, even though I didn't really explain it here properly, I was just like, stop. <laughs> um, one of the most amazing things about learning new things and being open to new ideas is when you just drop your guard and listen out of curiosity and interest um, rather than this uh, rigid perspective of the world that you know everything and that anyone who tells you otherwise about your understanding of reality is wrong and they should be locked up in a fucking psych ward or something. I feel as though this is one of the limiting factors in regards to human evolution and the convergence of science and these ideas of spirituality because mostly all spirituality is is understanding the universe within and outside and feeling and understanding things that other people can't see it's just it's the whole situation again where you hand a smartphone to an ooga booga guy from like i don't know fucking 500 bc if the ooga booga guy if there was some sort of universal platform in the ooga booga times of 500 bc and someone was explaining the smartphone to this whole society um the ooga boogas would crowd around them and probably bash them to death because uh number one this can't be our reality fuck you and number two fear as well um because it challenges the paradigm of this theoretical ooga booga society so just being be open to new information and then you take what you want regardless of whether or not you think it's true or you think it's provable to be true yada yada that's how we progress as humans we take in new information we don't resist new information and then we make a decision but just for the time being this is the science of consciousness this is what i've learned i'm pretty sure it's close to impossible to prove at this point with our technology maybe quantum science can do it but regardless just fucking drop the skepticism for one second let your surface awareness ego dissolve just listen so the idea is that consciousness, well, not the idea, consciousness is omnipresent. And the way I like to interpret this is the idea of the unified field. I'm pretty sure Albert Einstein was one of the people who proposed the idea. I'm not sure if he proposed the idea or he made the idea more public. The idea that everything's connected, but essentially all of time and space. I'm trying to find a circle brush. No circle? Okay. You know what? Fuck you. Right, for sake of visual aspect, I'm going to color this in black and I'm going to draw all the points in the field as white. I should probably do this in 4K, huh? So I can at least print it out after. Okay, there's a very basic thing that I probably could do a lot more better or easily using some sort of fucking Photoshop thing, but I just did it manually. This is the idea of consciousness. Well, some of it. Everything is interconnected. If you go into a, what was it again? From a technological standpoint, when we go, when we keep looking deeper and deeper and deeper into reality, we start seeing atoms, um, protons, neutrons, electrons, 
quarks, uh, uh, leptons. Uh, um, the information I have here might be incorrect just because the source was AI. So it's probably incorrect, but the main gist is here. So expanding on this just a little bit, AI has many issues. Anytime you get information from AI, double check it. And the, the issue with AI being in inaccurate is not a standalone issue online. We've always had an issue with information sharing online. Google uh, is known to suppress certain types of information or things that it doesn't deem fit for public knowledge or it doesn't want people to see. So AI is just another form of knowledge suppression in a way. Um, but it's also got the problem of actually hallucinating information, which is something that's very fascinating in artificial intelligence. So if you're interested by artificial intelligence, hallucinations, search it up, it's, it's hilarious. I think some of these are also hypothetical and theoretical. So you've got gluons, Higgs boson, which actually I think was proven. Prions, planks, like the deeper and deeper you go, into looking at reality, we just keep finding new shit. Just smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller things. So since I had that dream, I've also entered something. I, I had entered the Samadhi state, which is the deepest state of meditation, uh, at least as far as I know, that you can enter where you become one with the universe. And the, it's not like a lucid dream. It's not like sleeping. It's not like traveling through the astral realm, which I've only mostly just done partially in lucid dreams, not to the fullest extent of lucid lucidity. It's not like passing out. Um, I would probably describe the Samadhi state and near-death experiences as similar, just because of what I've heard about near-death experiences. But essentially there's this understanding and knowing that the entire universe is connected via something. And science theoretically says that it's a, it's a theory and it's difficult to prove but that there's something called the field. Consciousness, the awareness in our heads, is part of this field. So this is step one, knowing that everything is interconnected. I'm sorry this is taking so long, but to actually understand the science of consciousness, it's very, there's a lot of, it's like, it's, there's layers. It's like going preschool, learning about the world, and then moving your way up to high school, and then college, and then university. This is layer one. Uh, layer two is the idea that this field can also be okay i got a bit carried away with my explanations let me just try to sum it up really fast uh, i imagine there's like a billion of these fucking points your awareness your awareness especially in the astral when you're self-aware can move through every single point in time and space the idea is that consciousness is omnipresent once you understand this, the idea of remote viewing um, and astral travel becomes very simplified and it's much more easier to grasp. That's what I'm getting at here. Anyway, so knowing that now about consciousness, how it's omnipresent, um, when you enter different states of consciousness, reality, dimensions, however the fuck you want to put it, it doesn't matter. Um, when you enter these different states, especially if you can maintain your self-awareness, you can nav navigate drastically different than we do in this reality. <laughs> so, coming back to the lucid dream experience I had, I viewed looking into this different portal as looking into a different dimension, because that's the only way I could perceive that understanding at the time. This is one of the reasons I think it's very important to understand the science of consciousness before you do any sort of consciousness exploration, experiments, etc, etc. Or even meditation itself as well. What feels about right to me is that when I became self-aware, I was like a newbie to this whole different dimension. And one of the ways you figure out how things work in our reality is you experiment. So like, if I didn't know what walking was, and I wanted to get over there. I mean, I can literally just reach over there, but just imagine I'm pointing like towards a park and I, I don't actually know that you can walk. And then I say, I, I think, I'm gonna try go over there. I'm gonna see what happens. And then you just move um, instantly and you're doing something without even realizing what you're doing. It's a sort of an instinctual movement. 
What I think was happening with this uh, dimensional thing as I perceived it at the time, this was one of my first ever experiences attempting to navigate to a completely different area in the field. And when it comes to the astral, you control your movement very differently than you do in physical reality. It's not necessarily the movement, it's more so you control the... It's very difficult to explain. So since then, I've had another lucid dream. For fuck's sake, my Pomeranian will not leave my cattle dog alone. She's so tired. Be right back. Okay, so I've had another lucid dream since then. I'm having more success now. And I'm reading a book on something called The Phase. And the book is called The Phase. <laughs> and I discovered through this book that uh, Michael Roduga, the author and thousands of his practitioners or people who um, work in this reality, astral, whatever the fuck you want to call it. There are certain physics that are present within this perception of our reality. And most of the physics actually correspond heavily with quantum physics. Anyway, from my experience, I've noticed travel and movement in i use the terms below and above because technically this book michael roduga nails drills in the point that everything is the phase so like in other words it's just i guess it's just another word for reality but there's a below reality and an, and an and an above reality this is how i refer to it in my like journal and stuff so the below is the unconscious usually unconscious area but you can become self-aware in the below and then the and then the above is this everything here yeah so in the below the movement is very different and from my experience and hopefully future experiments i'll be able to confirm this your present intention your conscious intention if you are self-aware in the below basically materializes right in front of you right in front of like your field of view Outside of your peripheral vision, everything fills in the gaps, just like in real life as well. So like if you were to look at your hand like this and focus on it, and this is something from the book as well, and you move your hand out the way, there'll become a certain point where that hand sort of just completely dis disappears from your reality. And then as it comes back in, you won't actually be able to be able to count the amount of fingers on your hand until it comes into a certain field of view, and then you can finally perceive it. This is similar, this mechanic works very similarly in the below. Um, however, there's sort of this morphing effect that happens. So like the reality around you, outside of your peripheral vision, at least from my experience so far, um, shifts and morphs and changes just completely randomly. And there is a direct parallel between those two mechanics of peripheral vision and your mind filling in the gaps because as you walk around it's not like you can see 360 degrees all around you there's more in the above our life when you look forward you can sort of tell what's over there and when you look over there it does correspond with what your mind is filling in the gaps with but it is filling in the gaps when it fills in the gaps in this astral ab uh, below thing Everything shifts and morphs and changes continuously. Um, and once again, still need further practice, further experience. But that's what I've noticed. So the transitioning between areas and traveling to places is primarily via conscious intention to go to those places. And if you're not 100% lucid, I would imagine that going to places becomes sort of random a little bit, like I explained in this video. I need to come back to this. I'm finding it very difficult to explain. Okay, I'm just laying like this because I think one of the main reasons I'm finding it difficult to explain is because of the um, pressure and strain in my neck. I have spine issues, okay? So the experience I had with looking at my wrist, realizing I was dreaming, I gained some sense of lucidity. And immediately my curious and explorative and adventurous mind wanted to test the boundaries to see what I could do without even realizing I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I essentially opened up sort of a well, I literally said it in the video I'm pretty sure a, a portal to a particular area that I could explore in a way 
it's the same concept as remote viewing in the reality we live in like you close your eyes the idea with remote viewing is you close your eyes and you can move your consciousness and awareness to a place without actually going there i'm pretty sure this is something extremely similar but remote viewing works very differently in the astral that's the sense i get and this was some sort of remote viewing i was doing but you're able to actually step through the the portal you create to the area you're remote viewing but i was sort of doing it like without without even realizing if that makes sense anyway but i'm gonna try and explain it in the best way i can that makes sense to me my consciousness moved through the viewing portal and then i was flying inside the scenery i forgot i said that that's exactly okay literally what i just said yeah unintentionally i remote viewed in the astral but it's more than remote viewing in the astral realm when i say astral i'm either using that terminology very lo loosely here people call it all different things and something interesting with the astral is i think there's you can blend in and out of self-awareness if you don't have the ability to remain 100% lucid all of the time so sometimes what you see in the astral is a projection from yourself that's what I'm guessing but I don't have enough experience being self-aware in the astral so I can't really comment too much on it that I was looking at through the viewing portal but I was still lucid so I was able to experience the lucidity and the experience and then after I was done with that and I was happy, I didn't go exploring through space. It was more so just like trying to prove a concept and I didn't want to push the boundaries because I feel like sometimes when you push the boundaries, when you're not that experienced in lucid dreaming, you, you, you can lose lucidity. So then I came back and I, I dropped. I get the sense losing lucidity sort of becomes less and less of a problem the more you're able to experience lucidity. Seems like a no-brainer, doesn't it? <laughs> Almost correct. Past Yuland talking to past Yuland. Future Yuland talking to past Yuland. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, there is a method that I gained from the book I talk talked about just earlier. It's this idea of... It's actually one of the ways to... It's a way to deepen your connection. To, to quote the book, it's a way to deepen the connection to the phase. Um, or as I described it as before, because everything is technically the phase and everything is reality the below by the way you'll get the reference i'm doing when i go above and below if you know about hermeticism as above so below so below uh, as below so above or some shit um so yeah th there's a method that you can do to deepen your connection to lucidity um to enhance the self-awareness if you're losing it if the world around you is destabilizing in a lucid dream there's a method you can do there are a lot of stuff online about spin around and look at your hands and shit this one is one of the most powerful ones, and I actually used it in my recent lucid dream after reading this in the book. Go up to something, perceive it, scrutinize it, and palpitate it. Palpitate is an interesting word. I've never really heard it used in regards to like interacting with something. Usually like you hear about like heart palpitations, but I think the idea of palpitating is like, just tap it, figure it out, scrutinize it. What is it? Uh, perceive it, touch it push into it, see its consistency, um, move really close up to it, check it out, like literally just fucking analyze it from every fucking angle you can. Yeah, scrutinize, palpitate, and touch it, perceive it. Um, this helps deepen your connection to, to the phase or the below uh, if you're destabilizing or falling out of lucidity. That's something I discovered, and it's it's OP. It's It's overpowered as hell um it's it's an amazing technique that i've learned from the facebook and then i'm like okay what else can i do then all of a sudden i'm back outside and i'm still and i'm looking through the portal again and then i started asking very deep questions um i didn't want to but i started asking questions that were really going to stress me a lot because i suffer from a lot of primarily the worst shadow of my entire psyche is probably my pure OCD and it's very stressful talking about that so and then there's also like psychological traumas as well so I started asking questions um, looking through this portal because um, that was actually my intention before I went to bed I was like if I go to sleep I either want to have one of four dreams and it was like enjoyable desirable 
informative and educational or um, insightful and I forget what the fourth one was so I decided to try and look into my psyche a bit and it didn't really work I completely forgot about this bit I'm pretty sure I have the questions logged in my journal if I didn't log them in my journal god damn it <laughs> but I, I completely forgot about what I had done before I went to sleep that's actually something I want to try and repeat too well but yeah, I remember asking questions and the, the scenery would like morph and change into different things as I would ask the questions. I don't know if I actually got any sort of vivid scenes. Uh, it was very, it was very distorted, I think. Uh, I was try yeah, trying to remember it, it's very... I'm pretty sure, just judging from the way I look here and the way... I'm, I'm remembering it now. Lucidity was lost when the scenery started changing when I was asking these questions. Pretty sure that's what happened. It's a bit jumbled in that bit, trying to remember what I was seeing as I was asking the questions. It makes a bit of sense as well because I was, I was asking some stressful things and then when I realized I was stressing myself, I was like, okay, let's just try to overgeneralize this and be like, okay. I don't remember the exact questions I was asking as well. It's... Come on, Yoland. It was the feelings. But I, I do know I was asking things about trauma, pure OCD, um, pain, and all that, so... Interesting. Um, I actually got the answer to some of these questions in an encounter I had in the astral. Um, I probably won't talk about it here, because if I haven't lost you already, I'll probably lose you after talking about this encounter. <laughs> um, and then also there is just when you meditate when you connect with the field that we talked about there are a lot of uh, for the moment mystical properties that happen and stuff that just comes to you and communications that happen it's it's very strange and it's very difficult to talk about especially in our materialistic society but i did i have actually gotten some answers to some questions that i thought i would never have answers to so it makes sense that trying to recollect that would be difficult. But yeah, I didn't really get anything um, as far as I know. I probably did. It's, it's usually the memory that is at fault when you wake up. But um, it's also possible that it was just jumbled garbage because dreams will generally just do that. I have a dream framework video I'm working on. Um, which would better explain. So I scrapped that entire dream framework video. I still have the files, but what I've learned about consciousness, I'm going to have to revisit it again. I was up to like the fourth draft, but now I'm going to have to scrap the whole fucking thing. Explain <laughs> how they can some. But then again, probably not all of it, because there are actually some things that sort of don't necessarily talk about the understanding the actual physics of where I was uh scraps out a lot of the information that I had theories and frameworks of within that dream framework so I am going to have to go through it rip out a bunch of stuff now sometimes be garbled and then sometimes have proper narrative but um yeah I don't know it was a very interesting experience I I'm sure other people have had it um but I thought I'd share my my experience of Becoming lucid inside a dream, inside a dream. <laughs> but yeah, uh, thanks for listening. Um, let me know in the comments if you've um, experienced something similar. Um, <clears throat> I do know that when you interact with technology in dreams, it it acts fucking weird. But. I think that weirdness, honestly, me commenting on that at the time, I have a feeling that weirdness will sort of just go away the more you interact with technology within dreams and understand the way the physics works in the astral. I don't know if I would necessarily call the wristwatch in this scenario technology because it it wasn't a wristwatch anymore. <laughs> it, was a, it was a viewing portal. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, okay, bye. Yeah, so that that was my my experience with becoming lucid inside a dream. Inside a dream. <laughs> I'm going to try and put more effort into talking about my lucid lucid dream experiences and consciousness on this channel in particular. 
Um, if it gets too, too much, possibly make another channel. I don't know. But um, yeah, at, at, at this point, given the constant progression of my knowledge and consciousness and exploring more of this reality that we experience our intrusive simulations in and this lucidity, the phase, the astral fucking four dimensional, whatever the bloody hell you want to call it. Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to have to write a book because <laughs> at least with a book, I can keep coming back to it. Each time you make a video online, it sort of embeds a still point in time that people come to. And if that's the only video they watch online, it can give the wrong perception. But at the same time, like too bad if they don't keep up with your content. <laughs> But yeah, I think a book is a more stabilized way to present information because you can work on it for a prolonged period of time and there's more chances to come back to it and uh, fix up the finalized product that you're eventually going to push out. With, whereas with YouTube videos, they're points in time and the whole channel itself is like an extent, uh, like a, is a, and a YouTube channel is like a series of points in time that paint a very narrow picture of topics whereas i think books can dive into things more easily and also be more accurate to the interpretation that the author or the presenter is trying to push through okay yeah there's a there's so much experimentation to be done with lucid dreaming it's always it's an individual experience and i love sharing it um and lucid dreaming itself is so accessible to everyone like you don't need to put in well, I'd argue you, you sort of, if you want to do it a lot, you, you sort of need to do quite a bit of effort. You sort of need to put quite a bit of effort into it, into it and um, at least put enough effort into it to eventually get to the point where your subconscious understands that it is in a dream when it's in a dream. Then, uh, then I'm sure you can, you can lessen the frequency of your activities in the waking life with lucid dreaming. But until you get to that point, I feel like there is quite a bit of effort to put in. But yeah, um, as I said in the other video that we were watching of me, if you've had experiences like this, feel free to comment down below and uh, I will I will read them and I will I will gain insight from them. Thank you for listening. Oi.